Is Air Canada the best airline in North America? I don't know, but I'm here to find out. I've flown Air Canada so many times, but never in recent years. So it was about time to try North America's favorite airline according to the rankings, but seemingly every Canadian's least favorite airline in the history of humanity. This is Air Canada's flagship 777 business class on a transatlantic flight. And oh boy, am I excited to share all my thoughts with you. Let's dive right in. I'm Nonstop Dan, a half Swede and half American who's been obsessed with airplanes for as long as I can remember. Over the past seven years, I've been lucky to call reviewing flights my job, and in that time, I've flown 150 different airlines, virtually all self-funded because I'm really into this honesty thing. Nonstop Dan is all about trying to get as much value as possible with my miles, or when those are running low, my money, and then spreading the word so you guys get optimal value and can enjoy your travels to the max, and hopefully enjoy my geeky videos along the way. Where on earth have I been the past month and a half? Taking a much needed break but now I'm back and ready to rumble. It's a miracle finding business class award seats on Air Canada between Europe and North America. Somehow I found one little lonely seat from Montreal to Athens for 70,000 aeroplane miles, so I quickly transferred those over from Capital One to Book. You can currently earn more than enough points for this one-way ticket as a sign-up bonus on the Capital One Venture card at the link in the description. I had just spent four lovely days visiting my family in New York after flying in on Air France's A350. That review will be up soon, but I needed to get up to Montreal somehow. Luckily, it isn't very expensive or far, so I booked a one-way basic economy ticket on Delta from LaGuardia for just $100. The flight was on one of the snazziest little birds in the sky, the CRJ900. It almost looks like a cartoon to me. Flight time was less than an hour and we eventually touched down in a cloudy Montreal. From there, the connection process was a lot more seamless than you'd find in the US. Before checking out the Air Canada Maple Leaf Lounge, I saw on flight radar that my aircraft was just pulling into the gate. So I ran over and got some great views of its arrival. Well, guess where there were also great views? From the Air Canada Lounge. Air Canada takes a love for dark a little too far in some aspects of their branding for my taste. The lounge is thankfully a lot brighter than the entrance and features a variety of seating. I know it looks big, but wow did this lounge fill up to the brim. Most of the seating is arranged in fours, meaning that if one person is sitting there, the quad already feels occupied making things unnecessarily awkward. I was so excited to see Air Canada's food offering, and it wasn't bad. I say it was on par with the Delta Sky Club, but certainly not a premium business class lounge like the one they offer on paid tickets in Toronto. There was also what appeared to be a chef making fresh meals. It turned out he was just there to serve the pre-made meals, and this was merely a display. Overall, the food was fine and relatively healthy, but not a standout. What is a standout is always a lounge with showers, which are so appreciated after a long trip. Speaking of a long trip, should we head over and get on this 9 hour overnight flight to Athens? Boarding was scheduled to start an hour before departure, which sort of makes sense given that this bad boy is Air Canada's highest capacity aircraft. A special 777-300ER configuration with around 400 seats. Wowza! There are only 28 business class seats spread across 7 rows in a 1 to 1 configuration, taking up the entire space between the first two doors. This is clearly a leisure focused configuration, but the seat is the same as you'll find on all Air Canada's 777s and 787s. I had selected the only window seat that was left when I booked the flight one month prior, 5K. I was the very first person on board since I sneakily weaseled my way past a few people in the jetway. These empty cabin shots are not going to take themselves, you know. 
I really like the look of Air Canada's business class cabin, not to mention their fantastic reverse herringbone seats. As you can see, the center seats face each other, but they're still far apart so it almost doesn't make a difference if you sit here or in the window when traveling with a companion. The seats are extremely private considering that they don't have a door. You'll have to bend forward to even see the person next to you, and the only head you'll see is the top of the passenger in front. Other than that, there might as well be no one else on board. Now let me guide you around the seat even though I'm sure you've seen the reverse herringbone before. Air Canada chose a beautiful setup, but it's actually quite bare bones as far as the seat type goes. There's one storage compartment on the side which contains all your electronic stuff, so charging ports and your remote, etc. This is already more than enough storage, but most airlines choose to also have a drawer under the surface which Air Canada did not. Your other storage area is to your left under the armrest which makes it quite an awkward place to put things. I ended up using this as sort of a disposal for all my plastic wrappings. The armrest can also be raised or lowered. Now when it comes to raising and lowering things in business class, nothing is more important than the almighty recline. To say I was blown away by the advanced seat control system on Air Canada is an understatement. It allows a level of seat customization that few other airlines offer in business or even first class. You can really adjust every little part of your seat down to the centimeter. I also appreciate the equally adjustable tray table, allowing ample room to get out and use the bathroom even when the tray table has food or a laptop on it. Speaking of the lavatories, sorry for letting my inner American say hello by saying bathroom, they are fine but far from impressive amenities wise for a business class bathroom. Lavatory. I guess that's because most of what you need, like moisturizer or toothbrushes, can be found in a far more hygienic and less smelly place. Your personal amenity kit. I must say guys, this kit impressed me. North American Airlines really know how to do amenity kits. The contents were useful, and yeah, this freaking cloth. Tell me this isn't the best design ever. If you want your own amenity kit from a number of different airlines, you can now buy one on my website. The link for that is also below. During boarding, each of the 28 passengers received a personal welcome by our last names from the Quebecois Cabin Services Director, Julie. One of the youngest pursers I've ever seen. She was so lovely and great at small talk. As someone who values good service over almost all else, this was such a nice and unexpected touch. She spoke for a good minute or two to almost everyone. Chef's kiss. I have to say the man who took care of me during the flight was also fantastic. I was consistently addressed by name throughout the flight. That's impressive and sadly I can't imagine that's a guarantee on Air Canada, but I'd love to hear if this is a norm rather than an exception. He also perfectly balanced professionalism with humor, telling the occasional joke like, A few years ago I said to this man, are you finished sir? He goes, no, I'm not finished, I'm Swedish. Perfectly appropriate joke for me. Besides the lovely crew, I was sad to discover there was no pre-departure service whatsoever. No drinks or hot towels. Still with COVID as an excuse. Hmm. They did come by handing out menus though, which were pretty nice. I like the variety not only in options, but of cuisines. The vegan dish sounded really cool with lentil pasta, something I'd only expect to get on an airline with a hub in LA, but there you go. I really had time to study the menu because the ground crew in Montreal had about the same sense of urgency to get our plane out of there as Lufthansa has to install an acceptable business class seat. Too soon, too soon, sorry. A full hour behind schedule, we pushed back despite boarding being completed on time at 6.30. We then had a short taxi out to the runway and were off to Athens. This is a great time to congratulate this subscriber on being the latest to win a $100 gift card with an airline of their choice. If you subscribe right now, if you're not already, you'll be entered to win for my next video. Looking at the 777 wing is almost the best type of entertainment, but I didn't want to break my neck staring backwards for 9 hours, so I checked out the entertainment system. The menu looked like something out of the 90s which cracked me up, but the contents were fine. Not very good, but also not bad, like, hmm. 
Which airline should I pick on now? Why not Lufthansa? Also SAS, whose entertainment system is inspired by the extravagance of 1970s Swedish socialist TV channel offerings. Now if you want to use the onboard entertainment, you might as well hear the audio. And if you don't have a Bluetooth connector, these provided headphones are not bad at all. Sadly, they were collected a full 30 minutes before landing, which is always a bummer since it interrupts people's morning movies. Speaking of entertainment, there comes a time in life where whatever you have at home simply isn't enough. Well, thank goodness for today's video sponsor, NordVPN, who unlock a world of new content. By opening up streaming services and sites that aren't available where you live due to geo restrictions, with the fastest connections of any VPN, by the way. That's besides the main benefit of a VPN, of course, which is to hide your information and keep you safe so the bad people can't steal it. Best of all, NordVPN now includes threat protection, an additional layer of security protecting you from malware, malicious websites, trackers, and intrusive ads. Basically, NordVPN is your best online friend and they are offering an incredibly generous deal at the link at the top of the description. You can always try it, see how much awesome stuff you can do with it, and if for any reason you don't like it as much as I do, you can always use their 30-day money-back guarantee. Air Canada has a wide array of Wi-Fi offerings, with many different speeds to choose from, which I think is super cool. Several of these plans supposedly offer speeds fast enough to stream video, which is an ambitious promise at 35,000 feet. Nonetheless, super impressive that they offer such speeds and the price isn't too bad, especially when you combine it with a great deal on NordVPN to stream really whatever you want and stay safe on the network. The one thing I forgot to mention that really cracked me up before takeoff is that Canadians seem to have an unspoken rule that as soon as you board a red eye, it's time to make your bed. I felt awkward recording, but at one point, I swear, half the cabin was standing up, putting on their little mattress pads before they even settled in. Listen guys, Air Canada has among the comfiest business class beds in the world. I think it comes down to the ability to adjust the seat's firmness, because I managed to make it super soft and cozy, which made for my best night of airplane sleep since 2019. Yes, the space is quite restricted since almost half your body is under the entertainment screen, but it didn't bother me too much and I'm 6 foot 2. There are also individual air vents so you can get that perfect sleeping temperature. Now for the most surprising part of the flight, the food. Even I have to admit that this is not a good representation of the regular meals on board. As always, I ordered a vegan meal and what is this presentation? Who at Air Canada thought this was a good idea? I mean, the food wasn't bad, it was actually very tasty. But why is it in a big paper box and apparently this isn't even due to COVID? The main course was literally an economy class meal, but again, it tasted delicious. I had to sneak a video to show that the other's food looked different. I even went so far to order the vegan pasta off the menu to compare and although the concept is nicer, lentil pasta is pretty dry to start with. Put it on a plane and you're basically eating pasta shaped cardboard and tomato sauce. At least I got a lot of protein. When the meal was served, I asked for tea to drink with it, and the crew said they couldn't serve hot drinks while the seatbelt sign was on. The problem was that the seatbelt sign was on a good 7 hours of our 9 hour flight, including when there was no turbulence. The crew gave me all these tea bags to keep as compensation, which I thought was hilarious. Two hours later. I didn't tell them that I'm not really a big tea drinker. At this point, I was so ready to enjoy the comfy bed, so I reclined and woke up five hours later. It's such a heavenly feeling to get such a good night's sleep on a plane. I was starting to worry I'd lost my airplane sleeping skills before this. Once I opened my eyes, I immediately opened my window blinds because we were flying over the Balkans. And you know what that means? What a view!
As I was looking out, our breakfast was served. It came in the same box of doom as the previous meal, but again, the contents weren't bad. I didn't really feel like eating salad at 3am Eastern time, but I enjoyed the fruit and a recent breakthrough as an oatmeal slash porridge hater. I love overnight oats. With that, the purser Julie came to say goodbye to us, thanking us for flying with them, which was, again, a lovely touch. I can't say enough good things about the service on this flight. It could have almost been Qatar Airways given how dedicated the staff was. Besides that, my thoughts on Air Canada are, as with most airlines, quite mixed but generally positive. I loved the seat, I loved the service, I thought the food was tasty despite the bad presentation, I enjoyed the amenities and thoroughly enjoyed the bed, so overall an above average transatlantic flight. I guess I would seek out Air Canada again over much of the competition across the Atlantic, and I really wouldn't hesitate to fly them again based on this flight. Now to all my Canadian viewers who are excited to see me trash your national airline, I have one thing to say. Sorry. See you all in the next one, my friends. Until then, fly safe.